Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, Hello. relax, take that midweek break, mm -hmm. talk about Linux, talk about open source. What else are we going to talk about, Joe? Portals? Portals sound like a good thing to talk Aww. about. Aww, yes. We were, we were having a great time talking about our love for Portal and the Talos Principle in the pre-show. The royal we? <laughs> our love? Our love? Our love? Our love for a portal. I don't know. Apparently, and the Talos I principle. love portal and the Talos principle now. That's cool. All right, I'm down with that. <laughs> I do like the Talos principle, but kind of like with portal though. I promise you, this is not going to be a gaming show. But um, I hit the same thing in Talos. Uh, Talos, the fantastic benchmarking engine um, that also has a game built into it. I got to mm -hmm. a point in Talos is like, you know what? I get it. I understand this. I'm a hundred percent sure. Given enough time, I could figure this out. Don't care at this point, no. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, those puzzles get really challenging at the end. I was I was just telling Artharon about there's three different endings to Talos Principle, and it took me about a year to finish the last one. Ooh, <laughs> I, you're better than me. You're better than me. <laughs> Dude, uh, what's up with that new thing in front of your face hole? Yeah. So yeah. So I am using my new Aston Stealth mic. That's that my Steve husband gifted me while dressed as Santa See, in the Steve, after show of our after the Christmas Mulligan. episode. That, go back and watch Saturday. He's like, yeah, my new Aston mic. Thanks, Vin. I was like, yeah. what about Steve? Yes. Man? <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you to Vin too because this is the one he chose for me because it has a girl mode. <laughs> it's got boy mode, girl mode, guitar mode. It's not that it's a fantastically a constructed mic with really good dynamic response and a tight cardioid pattern. <laughs> girl mode, ladies yes. and gentlemen. That was my deciding factor on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and I also had a great time filling in for Pedro on Linux Gamecast Weekly this past Saturday. It was a really, that was really fun. <laughs> May he rest in peace. Um, yeah. Oh, he'll be back next week, everyone. <laughs> Dude, I don't know. Um, what am I? What do I have going on? Uh, oh, right. I was talking about that yeah. a minute ago. There was a splicing truck. The fiber is still getting closer, my neighbor. Owen. Yay! Allegedly, unless AT and T is like, no, not you. Why? Reasons. Ha ha. Somebody watches the show. And oh, I am trying something new is I always operate on if three people tell me like a thing or I want a thing, do a thing like first person. I'm like, that's a good idea. Always listen to ideas, you know, suggestions for like shows or anything like that. Second person, by the time it gets like the third person, it's ballparking around that same idea. I was like, okay, statistically, <laughs> maybe I should at least try this. So I will with this episode, if it works correctly, because recording this, people have been asking for the uncut in just an audio podcast form. Mm, so, yeah, nice. And our uncut just as like mm. soon as we go live and till we shut down. We do make the video available. And a couple yeah. of people watch that. So on the uncut page, I will attach the audios because you get a little custom RSS feed on Patreon. And oh, cool. you can just plug that and download it or just download the file itself if you want. We'll see. Yes. We'll see how that works out if people like that versus if this even works. If you're like, where's the show? It just didn't survive. <laughs> that could be a thing. Might have to watch it on video. So, yeah, sounds awesome. Do you want to talk about some stuff that's going on? Oh, okay. So, Plasma. Okay. So, this is yesterday, Microsoft stopped providing updates for Windows 7. So, let's try to migrate. Um, all our friends and family and, and people, as as many as we can, to something better. Uh, Linux, of course. <laughs> so, and one suggestion is the Plasma desktop, because it is a great choice for Windows 7 refugees, because it has the same menu layout and look and feel of a classic Windows desktop. And, you know, the Plasma team have started a campaign and need help with ideas, organization, and getting the word out. Or you can help by telling your friends, coworkers, and family. And that's always a good thing. I, I spread the, lo the love to all my students and get them converted over using animation software on Linux. 
So I like this. Um, I, I apparently <laughs> don't have some script enabled, and they're like, "Here, this looks just like Windows Seven. It's a blank screen." I'm like, ooh. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I ran into that. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, the other thing is honestly, why should we try be trying to make the Linux desktop experience for new Windows users look the same as Windows? Because people have been doing that since Linux first had an X server. <laughs> Yes, well, that, very that true. That and a Mac. <laughs> I think a lot of people yeah. would like the Mac look. Yeah, definitely. So, but Linux has so many diverse desktops that are easy to use. And with the popularity of Chrome OS, Android, iOS, Mac OS, users are used to using different desktop interfaces. So, you know, Mate, Budgie, Cinnamon, Gnome, Pantheon are also great for Windows users migrating to Linux. And they all are, and and so is Plasma. Uh, Plasma is a great choice. So, uh, honestly, any modern Linux distribution <laughs> is perfect. <laughs> mm. I saw a lot of talk. I was watching on the um, PC World podcast, uh, which they do. Which is a, it's a fun show. It's more hardware oh, yeah. related, and the, the, like the entire opening of like, what will people do? Now that Windows 7, is it, uh, yesterday was official, right? It was EOL, right? Yeah. The security Correct. patches. I genuinely think that the people who are still running Windows 7 are the same people that would still be running XP. They don't care. XP. The, the computer box yeah. thing device is <laughs> in the corner and it's not going to get upgraded. And if you have the misfortune of it being a family member and you're like, okay, listen, there's still a way to get Windows 10 on that then you're going to be responsible for telling them how come this thing's no longer in that exact same place. And, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so that is definitely a thing. <laughs> no, I have no desire to try to, I've, I've gone through this in my life, you know, and like right when I get in you know, back in the nineties, even like probably up until the mid two thousands, I was definitely the one of like, Hey, have you heard about our Lord and Savior, Lydas Torvalds? Let me convert all your computers to Linux. And then you're responsible mm -hmm. for that person. <laughs> yes, that that is very true. Except when you give it to someone that is more uh, technically inclined and and understands things more, then you don't them you don't have to worry about. Yes, you do. <laughs> so. <laughs> is, it, is that the lie you tell yourself so you don't have to do the tech support? No. You're like, ah, oh, you'll no. figure it out. <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. You know, and part of that, again, is because, you know, Linux, part of, of the learning is tinkering with it. And those who are serious to move over, that's what they want to do with it. They want an operating system that they can, you know, manipulate and make their own. <laughs> uh, we, we'll say the type of person that is going to end up running Linux is not going to be the type of person that's like, oh, look, <laughs> the type of person that doesn't know that their operating system just outside of the pop-up is no longer getting they're not going to be the person who's going to let's make the switch i'm not poo-pooing the idea it's a great yeah, idea yeah. let's get everyone running that but then mm -hmm. i'm going to spare everyone who's like well you know the desktop's going away anyway because i don't feel like yeah. building those emails mm -hmm. let's talk about something that's really exciting though yes <laughs> Some of this kde stuff let's talk about the best uh, desktop XFCE. manager in existence i'm sure everyone wholly <laughs> agrees with me right Right? Yeah, that's right. It is one of the best. <laughs> uh, this is a little blog update. And this is for the 415 update. You know, it starts out saying, yo, you know, there's a lot of reasons that 412, a uh, four year development cycle, we didn't get a lot of um, maintenance releases and fixes because everyone was busy getting thing, everything over to GTK3, which they were, you know. But they do say, hey, man, coming in 415, we're going to finally get the client side decorations. Those have already showed up in LibXFC for UI. Those changes, like mm -hmm. all the dialogues and stuff, are going to be converted using CSD by default without any code changes needed for the existing projects. And mm -hmm. that's really neat, man. I am 100% done with that. Now, oh, yeah. 4.15 <laughs> will also have an improved. Is there a screenshot? They show this off in, with just the about XFCE. So it's going to be better looking than just like the regular pop-up window that you're familiar with. That's going to be a thing that dialogue default dark mode, huge mm -hmm. fan of that, huge That's fan awesome. of that. 
especially <laughs> with like 43 inches of retina searing IPS in front of me. Uh-huh. Dark mode. Yes. Big fan. <laughs> um, and only themes that support GTK3 will be shown in the appearance dialogue. So Yay, you, you don't have that improve. like option of like, yeah. does this theme? Oh, well, it kind of <laughs> works. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, man. Yeah, unifying the XFCE desktop. Awesome. And there will also be improvements to the display dialog, which will show aspect ratio and preferred mode settings. And the directory menu plugin now allows you to directly create folders and files. I was happy about that. Because <laughs> then you don't have to go in another location to do that. So very, very, very good. They're having lots of wonderful updates. And we have it's lots to look forward to. It's it's not, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> used to getting updates from XFCE. Like, what is yeah, this? It's, you, this it's so madness, exciting. This newness. <laughs> I'm still running... 412 because mm. 412 mm. baked yeah there's no I, i'm not going to say there's no bugs in it because something would mm -hmm. crash if i said that but on um our streaming rig and well, everything i have all these boxes are running 412 because it works it's great but i'm looking mm -hmm. forward to this future i just uh i'm just gonna sit back and take that approach you know i'm used to things right now they're gonna have to eol 412 before I'm going away ah, from it. Yes. Yeah. The, I run I run stable as well. <laughs> uh four fourteen? Um I actually um four twelve. Four fourteen stable. Still on four twelve. Yeah, it is. I need to update. <laughs> I don't. It's gonna happen. I tried it. I tasted it. And it's like, yeah, that's a thing. Ah. You know what? That's cool. You can hang out over there right now. Not broke, <laughs> don't fix. This is something I'm trying to teach myself. Yes. With everything in the studio. <laughs> this is very oh, difficult definitely. to do because you want to play with new stuff. Uh-huh. That's hard. Yeah, and you're like, you need that oh, I just want to update. And it's like, is it broke? No. Okay, well, write a business plan for why you need to. You have to do that. You have to do it to yourself, which is cruel. And it's yes. Mad. Yeah. A little bit of a PSA for everyone, though. Uh, yeah. In case you so, didn't know. Upda uh, update your Firefox. Make sure to update your Firefox from um firefox 72 to 72.0.1 mozilla found a vulnerability that hackers were actively exploiting in targeted attacks against users this has been accomplished with firefox's first in time compiler which speeds up performance of yes javascript to make websites load faster and in doing so can allow malicious javascript code to run outside of the browser on the host computer and yeah, so how many issues have there been with JavaScript over the years? It just seems like that one gets hit quite frequently. Well, I know you're a huge <laughs> proponent of um, VB script over JavaScript. And uh, yeah. you, you want to bring back IE proprietary extensions to the web. Yes. No, I do like JavaScript, but it does always seem to be the, the target for a it's lot of here. It's here. It's a cockroach. You're not getting rid of it. I mean, yeah. It's like people give me <laughs> static for when I'm rolling out like a lamp stack. You're like, what? You want to use Apache and PHP? Like, they're never going away. Yeah. <laughs> However, I'd prefer to use Nginx over Apache just because it's so easy to use. This. Yeah. <laughs> update your systems. When this was released, yes. this was zero day. It was actively being exploited. Even my old, crusty, delightful Debian 10.2. They were like, yo, update. Mm -hmm. Update. Yeah. Just get it taken mm -hmm. care of. You don't need to know what it does or what it did just update because i know a lot of you yeah. rank firefox myself included yes but i'm using that new advanced um esr um, oh yes <laughs> ancient ancient version <laughs> which shipped with debian 10 but i only use it for, to like manage youtube that's uh definitely mm -hmm. a thing but but mm -hmm. um how do we want to go with this um a how are you going to pronounce that? Joe? Uh, Go ahead. Aode Linux. A -O I think the yeah Aode. I think the E is silent after the D. <laughs> Aode. Possibly A O E D E. <laughs> I want to call it Aode, like Odie. Yeah, Odie. Maybe that. Right, Odie you know Garfield's what? Odie. Too late. The A is silent. It's Odie. Um, okay. <laughs> Odie Linux. New rule. I just made up. It is uh, mm -hmm. audio. 
a new distribution focusing on audio production. And welcome to Linux Gamecast or anything I do. I'm it's like, what? Moth <laughs> lame. I'm going to take a look at it. And this is just a custom. I mean, this is an alpha one release of this. Let's go to the main page. We're looking at might want to throw a little bit of extra information in there. Cause this is a mm -hmm. new description. Yeah. Website <laughs> yes. set up. But let's give you the pitch. Mm -hmm. OD Linux. It's arch based. Look at that. Somebody mm -hmm. just got happy. Um, for audio engineering oriented distribution in the vein of Ubuntu Studio, AV Linux, NKX mm -hmm. Studio Projects, which only to name a few. That's where it's taking its inspiration. The bulk of the modifications to the arch provided Archizo uh, release engineering scripts were taken from the arch wiki entry professional audio, which yes. I recommend that anyone take a look at because. Art, arch documentation, it's gorgeous. Um, the Arch Wiki, mm -hmm. brilliant resource. Um, it's built to work with 32-bit, hey, that's a thing. And 64-bit uh, packages, it just needs 11 mm -hmm. gigs of drive Very space. Good. And <laughs> yeah, it's pretty easy to get set up, man. Um, mm -hmm. Always happy to see, more the merrier with that. But yeah, you have some thoughts. Yeah, definitely. Well, I think it's wonderful having an audio engineering arch-based distro because this just makes so much sense because you can get all the latest updates on audio software. I actually use um, an art, the arch-based Endeavor OS, which I love, as on one of my machines so I can test the latest animation and video editing software, including Blender, um, which is in the in the repository so you don't have to go to their website and get the update and davinci resolve they have really good um uh, scripts to launch davinci under arch hmm. so it's 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 that's that's where i go out and test the latest and greatest and then i bring them over to my stable machines my lts and CentOS and whatnot for uh, rendering <laughs> now i should point out that yeah. it does ship with uh by default lxde for the desktop. Yeah. Like, oh, it's, it's an interesting choice, but okay. Nice and light. You can make yeah. that argument, but there are, <laughs> you can change up the script if you want to put something, you know, like um, XFCE, yeah. or if you just don't want the system no. to work very well, you put no mono. Um, <laughs> yeah. Pedro's not here. Okay. I'm trying to like randomly attack a desktop manager because I, <laughs> I, I, I personally like no, I just wanted to throw that in. Um, as someone who allegedly knows something mm -hmm. about audio engineering production, I find this a curious choice because audio uh, hardware software moves at a glacial pace compared to everything else. <laughs> and we'll look at to the point of where I'm running Debian 10 on this, but if you're watching the video, this little corner right here, this is our dedicated audio box. This is Jackbox. It's running 1804 and it's air gapped mm -hmm. because yeah. once you have it running, when you have everything set up, you have your DAW, you have Jack, you have Pulse or whatever, and you know, your sequencers, your plugins, your effects, and everything, and you correct kernel setup, RT, IRQ setup correctly. You don't want to touch it ever. You never, yeah. you don't want any updates <laughs> you don't to want it. To keep you, no. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, boom, pull the Ethernet cord out of the back. I mean, <laughs> this this thing's not online. I mean, the fiber connection is between this and Threadripper. That's it. That's the only IP thing this thing knows about. So this is going to be an interesting thing. Uh, I'm curious to see yeah. what comes from it. I'm keep an eye on it because yeah, definitely. I'm definitely. not a huge fan of uh, Ubuntu Studio. I mm -hmm. I put that one time and looked at it and I was like, mm, no, this is not my thing, but yeah. it could be your thing. And that's the beautiful thing about yes. Linux, isn't it? Exactly. Everybody's got exactly. their own, own cup of tea on that. But, <laughs> oh, look, Linus is being oh, nice again. Yeah, we have our big story. <laughs> Do you know what? He is kind of being nice. He's being yes. nice. Uh, this is from Ars Technica. Everything is going to be in our show notes. Linus Torval says, mm -hmm. don't use ZFS. Doesn't seem to understand it. Oh, shots fired. Um, mm, yeah. <laughs> Linus, Linus should avoid authoritative statements about projects he's unfamiliar with. Fair point. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say that. Now, 
of course, you're probably like, this is old news. Not old news, but everyone knows what our stance is on ZFS. You know, yeah. the file system itself, tech on, a te- on its technical merits, completely safe to use in production, 100%. Mm-hmm. This boils mm-hmm. down to there was a kernel change and it broke one of the shims to make um, ZFS work. That's kind of what it boils down to, oversimplification. Yeah. But what it really boils down to is Linus doesn't trust Oracle. And what good reason, good reason, man. I don't trust Oracle. I don't like Oracle because you <laughs> killed Sun just to get their patent so you could try to sue Google, man. That's the only reason. Um, now, this entire mm-hmm. thing comes from uh, Linus. He was responding to a question like, last week regarding an update to the Linux kernel that broke a third party ZFS module. It's like, if somebody adds a kernel module like ZFS, they're on their own. They are. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I can't maintain it. And I cannot be bound by other people's kernel changes. Fair. Mm-hmm. Then he went on to say, <laughs> then he oh. went on to say, there's no <laughs> way I can merge any of the ZFS efforts until I get an official letter from Oracle that is signed. By the main mm-hmm. legal counsel, or preferably Larry Ellison himself, that says, yes, it's okay to do so and treat the end result as GPL. Yeah. <laughs> I can feel Very you. I, I can feel yeah. you, Linus. <laughs> like, yeah, with any other company, you might be, that's overkill. It's Oracle. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oracle, yeah. Little, little bit litigious. Little bit. Yeah. But, um, he was correct, Jill? Uh, yeah. Well, Linus was correct, of course, about the licensing issues, but he actually wasn't correct with this. Uh, he, he states, don't use ZFS. It's that simple. It was always more of a buzzword than anything else, I feel. The benchmarks I've seen do not make ZFS look all that great. And as far as I can tell, it has no real maintenance behind it anymore. And yeah, honestly, this... It, this obviously does seem to be a maintenance issue, but saying that ZFS is a buzzword is highly inaccurate. And as Ven was saying, ZFS is heavily used in production. And it's one of the reasons why Canonical has included this progressive snapshotting file system in their latest Ubuntu 19.10 release that we tested. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's, to be- it's very stable. <laughs> Trying to be fair to you, Adam, okay? Um, Aww, we love you, Linus. <laughs> uh, that, that little lovable critter, Linus. Um, I do believe he was referencing Open ZFS. Yeah, and that was that was the other thing I was going to say. They use Open uh, ZFS for the Linux uh, port. <laughs> you use ZFS. Open ZFS is a different project. I'm, I'm, so. Yeah, <laughs> ZFS. <laughs> ZFS, the what you would use in production, is exactly what it is from Oracle. And Oracle's like, hey man, you can use it. We we'll yeah. probably won't sue you out of existence. <laughs> Maybe. Um But yeah, to to just poo-poo that because let's, let's face it, compared to like ButterFS, ext4, mm-hmm. yeah. um, anything along those lines, ZFS is Scandinavian witchcraft when yeah. it comes down to its abilities and use. So Yeah. Well, and Butter SF has a lot of the same capabilities, you know, but it's not staple. It's not stable. And I could have said that exact same sentence 10 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> well, Jim Salter talks about that in the article. Mm. So. <laughs> that, that's, but yeah, I know. ButterFS. ButterFS is like, it's almost ready, you guys. And it's like, yeah. didn't you say that a decade ago? <laughs> yeah, that's the very true. Yes. <laughs> we'll see, man. But, we'll see. Yeah. Um, Huawei. <laughs> It's got a new Linux distribution. Yeah. So um, Huawei offers a CentOS-based enterprise Linux distri- distribution called Euler OS. Euler? Yeah. Didn't they have called it Euler? <laughs> I know. It's Ferris Bueller's Day OS. <laughs> Sorry. So recently, Huawei has released a community edition of Euler OS called Open Euler. And due to the trade blacklisting of Huawei by the U.S. government, the source code is available at Gitsy, a Chinese alternative of Microsoft's GitHub. 
And, you know, it, it is awesome because as we've talked about last September here on LWW, Huawei is now selling their beautiful Matebook laptops at their very own uh, V-Mall uh, marketing site and um, um, store. And they're actually sending those out with the Debian i386-based Debian Deepin Linux pre-installed. So yeah, but there's something unique about about this uh, open URL, Euler, <laughs> open Euler that Ven will tell you about. It's made entirely <laughs> a broken dream. No, it's not. Oh. <laughs> it's based on sin. And I was like, okay, well, I'm accustomed mm -hmm. to seeing you know business you know things rolled out on sin, but it's aimed at enterprise ARM deployments, ARM sixty four. Yeah. That's what it's been optimized awesome. for. I'm going to sit back mm -hmm. and I'm like, I'm going to watch this. Where are you going to go with that? That's kind of interesting mm -hmm. because yeah. according to some, ARM's the future. Linus will tell you, ARM is not the future. Go away. <laughs> yes. And he'll throw a ZFS module at you. And I'm kind of interested. Uh, always, always on top of whatever's going on, you know, with CentOS, just because that, that, that's an yeah. interesting critter to tango with and just the uses mm -hmm. of it. So good on you, mates. Uh, yeah. What do we have? Um, oh, Wonderful. right. This. Yeah. This Hardware I did, acceleration. I didn't expect to see <laughs> this. Um, experimental yeah. VP9 support for the VDPAU driver for NVIDIA. You're like, okay, so what are you talking? For Chromium. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Chromium Vapi. We're going to be able yeah. to roll this out. Uh, this is forked off the VDPAU VA driver from Ubuntu. And... It's going to add an experimental hardware video acceleration support for videos encoded using VP9. That's the thing they mm -hmm. used to use before. Now everything, well, they're rolling out AV1's the future, but VP9 yeah. was the future not so long ago. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> you know, if you, there's a good chance if you're looking at something like uh, UHD or 8K videos on YouTube, it's going to hammer your CPU. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. It's going to be brutal Definitely. on it. <laughs> Why are the fans spin? I was watching. It was something I'd done. I think it was uh, my one of my Half Life. Uh, they were recorded at UHD. Mm -hmm. I have a thread ripper, and it was yes. Like, and it was having, what's yeah. going on? It wasn't having a problem playing it, but I mean that was spread out. I mean it was generating Working some hard. heat just to play <laughs> that UHD video. Yeah. So hopefully this is going to take care of it. I mean, if you have a reasonably new NVIDIA card, I'm going to say 9 Series and above. So mm -hmm. just, just check your NVIDIA code, uh, decode support matrix, which you can do that. Just go with, oh, if you want to do it with the GUI, you can just pop it in, go to your system settings and just look under that. And you should have VDPAU hardware decoding support. So this is interesting. Yeah, definitely. And you know the the goal for this project is to reach video hardware acceleration feature parity with Windows on Chromium or Firefox on on all the Linux distributions. Mm -hmm. And yes, we need that. And also getting 8K video hardware acceleration working like it does on Windows. And yeah, as Ven was saying, playing 4K videos from YouTube definitely could be an issue on Linux, even with the highest end software. What if you're stuck like he was with a saying. Laptop? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just go from, you, you bring it down to 1080p. <laughs> but yeah, that's been an issue. And my 1050 Ti did halfway decent uh, with it, but with 4K, um, with 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 uh, uh, this plugin. But of course, I don't have that option on my AMD or, or RX, uh, you know, 580. So mm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it, 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 it. It slugs 4K along. This is, and I usually end up downloading it to play it because mm. it plays fine when you download it. It's just playing it from YouTube. <laughs> Being able to take advantage of that through your uh, browser, you can play it with like InPlay or um, InPlay or yes, I use yeah. I still remember reading about that on Slashdot when we had the first announcement years and years ago, probably close to a mm -hmm. decade over a decade ago, when VDPAU was uh, announced and released for Linux. Yeah. Because now you're not thinking, you're like, hey, man, I got six cores, eight cores, 12 cores, 16 cores. Like, I don't care. Yeah. I, I can just throw hardware at the problem. 
this was back in single core days yeah. where <laughs> you, there was a good chance you could not play full 1080p video smoothly mm -hmm. you just yeah, remember that was a thing you might get away with 720p <laughs> and when vdpau launched on linux we had that access it worked for mplayer there was a patch Yes, I remember, like, in the browser using you play back. CVS back in the day. There was no yeah, kit, and <laughs> got that, and you could use the dedicated silicon and your NVIDIA card, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden I could play all these videos now that I used to not be able to, and I was very happy. It was kind of brilliant. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad to see VP9 this is awesome. support mm -hmm. show up just in time for AV1. Yes. <laughs> womp womp. All right. So we're going to give it to you. If you're in the moon for some pie, what do we have this week? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is ah, awesome. A 3D printed homebrew machine running a Raspberry Pi. And this Raspberry Pi 4 computer looks like a smaller version of my so-called 80 pound portable Texas Instruments 286 from my collection. It's a much smaller version, but the same idea, all, all in one. And yes, this is for you know, for those of us that, you know, are inspired by William Gibson, Gibson's 1984 sci-fi classic Neuromancer. This is, this is your cyber deck. This is your, your deck into the internet in the virtual world. And it needs to be self-contained for security. It's a cyber and... deck? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what they're calling it. The All cyber right. deck. <laughs> what, what would I call it if I was from New Zealand? Uh, 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 a kiwi deck. <laughs> I look forward to the comments. Um, <laughs> but this is really cool. It's got um a little touch screen on this on the side, and currently he's r running Raspbian with the i3 window manager, and um it's got a, a really big honking battery on the back of it. And it's just this wonderful self-contained unit um, with a mechanical keyboard and USB <laughs> and all the plugs. <laughs> so you can do it's 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 a 3D printed computer. Who doesn't like that? <laughs> so this is awesome. I want want to make one. <laughs> it, it definitely does harken back to the luggables. Yeah. Oh, definitely. And I saw that Mr. Alert pointed out something that I noticed. Uh, the screen is upside down and or inverted. Yes, yeah. So he had to had to flip it, and maybe uh, his eyes are just the, upside down. In the console, yeah. And this is the Reviser version one Cyber Deck. So this is his latest one. Fully three D <laughs> printed case, seven inch touch screen, mechanical yeah. keyboard. Of course, you want to annoy people. Mm -hmm. you, uh, make it nice and portable. Click, click, click. Foldable, mechanical. On and off switches. Mechanical on off switches, which are awesome. And I love these old, you know, foldable computers. I mean, that that is the, some of the, my favorite computers in my collection are these vintage foldable that have most of mine, of course, have the little, uh, the little tiny, you know, four or five inch uh, um, uh, white on green, you know, screen. Yeah, but... CRT tubes, those little baby yeah, ones. Yeah, classic CRT tube. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Um I that that's neat, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Homebrew for the win. Uh, uh... <laughs> and this one's neat, I guess, too, Ben. <laughs> I just, uh, oh, I mean the creativity of this, this is neat. Um like job done, because there's people that are like, I like old stuff and I like putting new mm -hmm. stuff in old stuff. And I'm like, you know yeah. what? We can all get along. I don't get it, but yeah. okay, that's cool. You do you, man. You know, yeah, you can you can make a modern Commodore sixty four with a Raspberry that's, that's Pi. That's what I'm saying. Like, maybe you can't ZX find Spectrum. like the original like uh, stuff to like <laughs> hoard, so you can make your own yeah. stuff to hoard. <laughs> yes, yes. Great. Now I prefer using the original, but the point yeah, of this you see, is you, that you it's could actually homebrew. do stuff on this, though it's usable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Very true. Very true. <laughs> a modern processor, but that's what's cool about this. This is a homebrew. This is basically the Heath kit of, of the day. <laughs> 3D printing. Um, yeah. Yo. <laughs> Check this out. 
Super scale active mm-hmm. suspension Arduino powered 3D printed RC drift Oldsmobile Dynamic 88. Said that in one breath. <laughs> uh, huge fan of the license plate man. 999 yeah. evil when it does handstands. <laughs> yes, it is a mouthful, but it's a big project and it's almost finished. Almost finished. ED, come on. I'm, I'm going to be that guy. <laughs> So you're wondering, like, what's going on here? So let's just go ahead and jump over to the video. And I'm going to... Yes. This this thing reacts like an actual... If this was like a two-ton, 4,000 freedom unit. And look at that intercooler on the front. I I noticed that. I see that. Car stop. Ah, all right. I've already put someone to sleep with that. It has active suspension. (laughs) It reacts like it was genuinely that heavy. If it's going around quarters, it would do the lean. Uh If you push it forward, it has that lunge. Same thing with going back. This would be very interesting for movie bra. I mean, if you're doing miniatures. Oh, definitely. Because this is realistic physics yeah. simulation, man. And also, yeah. why does it not have an Ecto-1 paint job? That It's kind of <laughs> bugging me. But uh, what it does, I mean, that Arduino, it's like reading data off triple axis um, accelerometer in real time. So it's adjusting those servos like, on each single wheel, man, in real time to mimic just a car throwing its weight around. I mean, it's a real suspension mm-hmm. system. It looks legit. It's really cool. It looks amazing. It looks like, you know, the the drifting on miniatures for the win. And and yeah, you know, for those of you who can't afford to do this on your own car in, in IRL, <laughs> drifting or bouncing, you can, you can make one of these. <laughs> you could theoretically make it bounce. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty cool man I, i'm down with that <laughs> unfortunately as of yet there's not a parts list you can find the link to the blog um but i was reading so what did you do with this he's like i don't have a parts list for this yet he's mm. working on making a module that'll be compatible with a lot of like rc cars and stuff like that which is great i'm sure there's people that want to buy it but i'm the overwhelming majority of people who look at that are like, I just want a parts list so I can like source it and build it. So maybe keep that in mind. Cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's going to do it. Before we get out of here, we always like to remind you that our nonsense is completely community funded by you. Yes. Everyone kicking in a few mm-hmm. quid over at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. We try to give you some incentives and uh, for supporting our nonsense. It's kind of neat. Thanks, everyone, again mm-hmm. for that. We do have affiliate links and stuff at linuxgamecast.com. We got merch. Look at look at this yes. green merch. <laughs> yes, this is the... Uh, it's not available anymore. And I like was, how you're going li- to get that behind out of the mic. Process <laughs> I was uh, of elimination. This way, nope. This one, nope. This one. That, was, <laughs> no, that was some AI this... level right there. It's like, I can figure this out. <laughs> this mic is just too darn big. <laughs> Here. <laughs> Hell Santa. <laughs> oh, that is kind of brilliant. Uh, we do have an Amazon wish list for the studio. Jill's got one. It's kind of brilliant. You get your name on the wall if you get anything for our um, craziness. Oh, Pedro. Wish you were back. Oh, really. we love Pedro. And uh, <laughs> that's going to do it. But if you want to get yeah. in touch with us, linuxgamecast.com forward slash contact. Tap that contact button. Send us some email, man. Select the right show. We do a couple of shows each and every week. Uh, Jordan's going to be back tomorrow and uh, with uh, probably Vermintide, and I'll be back with some Freeman on Friday. We got mm-hmm. relationship advice. Uh, tell us if we got something <laughs> wrong. Maybe we got something right. I always try to grab YouTube comments, but please keep in mind, I have 1,200 videos posted on that, and they get all 1,200 <laughs> yes. of those videos at some point. Of every hour, someone's leaving a comment, so it might get lost. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to lose it. I want to talk back to you. Or just hop in our Discord. Yeah. Your patron, mm-hmm. just link that in. Come say hi to us, because that's where we hang out the other six days of the week. It's terrible. Yes. It's frightening. <laughs> Actually, it's a super cool community that um, yeah. I'm glad to be <laughs> a part of myself. All right. Yes. And uh, mm-hmm. can do some music? Yeah. Because we're going to roll some credits. Yes, cool. Credits. And yeah, our Theron, you are right. That the cyber deck we were just talking about in the Pi segment looks like the computer, computers from the quadrilateral cowboy that you gifted me. <laughs> quadrilateral cowboy. 
<laughs> Big words. Uh, Here, yes. See. <laughs> so thank you to our executive producers and our beautiful producers. We love you all. Without you, this show would not exist. It absolutely well, would not. This is a Patreon have. goal show, man. Come on. Yeah. I mean, it genuinely yeah. is that. Mm -hmm. We're like, yo, would you like us to do something on Wednesday? And everybody's like, yeah, man, we could do a thing on Wednesday. So we're able to finance it. Yeah. Definitely. I can't believe it's episode 205. Wow. <laughs> I can. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Because I've loved each and every one of them. Why are you laughing? Yes. At <laughs> oh, I love each and every one of them as well. <laughs> oh. Love you, everyone.